Welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about streamlining the OpenShift developer experience by building a uh, enterprise Helm chart repository. Uh, my name is Austin Dewey. I'm a senior consultant at Red Hat. I've been with Red Hat for about four years and I've been working with Discover for about two on their um, OpenShift uh, adoption. Uh, Sachin, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Sachin Chara. I'm principal system architect at Discover Financial Services. Uh, with the Discord, I've been working with three years, and um, uh, I just started with the OpenShift team a year ago, and started working on the Kubernetes and OpenShift platform. All right. All right. So, as you are probably aware of, um, OpenShift provides many benefits for developers and application teams, such as um, application auto scaling, uh, self healing applications. Uh, it has an S2Y system um, to enable uh, easy builds uh, within the cluster. Um, there's all kinds of benefits, all kinds of reasons to adopt OpenShift. Uh, but of course, anytime you move to a new platform, uh, there's going to be there's going to be some time uh, that it takes to actually ramp up on that platform. It, it takes time to become proficient on a new platform. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Here's four high level reasons. One, are, one is new workflows, um, you know, new ways of doing things uh, in the platform, new tools to get there, such as the OC CLI, the Helm CLI, which we'll learn more about later. Um, there's new lingo, right? What are containers? What is DevOps? Um, so there's all kinds of new terms and phrases to learn there. And then uh, new concepts, and that, that kind of goes hand in hand with the lingo. Um, you know, concepts around or best practices around uh, containers, around deploying applications in OpenShift, um, so on and so forth. Uh, there's many different ways to approach application development on OpenShift. Um, you might have asked yourself one of these questions, or you might have asked yourself all of them, right? Which tools will we use? There's a lot of tools out there in, in, uh, in the community. Um, how do you know which are the which tools are the right tools for you? Um, and kind of going off of that, how will you actually build and deploy your application images? Uh, once you kind of have a process in place manually, how are you going to automate that? Um, how are you going to provide reusable components for other teams? Uh, there's a lot of different app teams in your organization. Um, you don't want them all to have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you want to provide something for them so that they can hit the ground running sooner. Uh, they can become productive in the platform as as soon as possible. Um, two more here, you know, how, how do people know what they're doing is the recommended solution when they're new to the platform? How do they know what they're doing is actually the best practice? Uh, and what OpenShift resources do we need to configure, right? If you are familiar with OpenShift and Kubernetes, you know there's a lot of resources. There's deployment services, routes. Um, how do you know you're using the proper services for your, or the proper resources for your use case? So, as a member of a OpenShift operations team or as a member of a DevOps team, um, we feel that it's, it's your job to provide a set of common tooling and processes for application teams. Um, and by doing that, what you do is you decrease the amount of training and overhead that application teams feel to get acquainted with that environment. Um, you establish a direct and trusted approach uh, maintained by the platform team. When, when people have questions, they can come to you as, as the subject matter experts, uh, as, as the maintainers of, of their tooling that they use to develop on the platform. Um, you know, like I was saying, they have a centralized location for getting support. Um, they have a set of reusable components, and so that goes back, you know, team to team. You have a, a set of components that you can distribute throughout there. Um, and then an out-of-the-box working solution. You know, they don't have to develop this on their own. They can use what you've already provided, what you've already tested and vetted out um, to make them more productive. So our solution that we came up with at Discover is to build an enterprise Helm chart repository. So you can see um, a few different Helm charts here, image build, Node.js, um, so on. Uh, we'll get to each of these in detail in a little bit. First, I want to talk a little bit about Helm, give a little bit of a Helm 101 before we dive into the nitty-gritty uh, technical details here. So, 
a quick review of Helm. Helm is known as the Kubernetes Package Manager. It's, it's named that because it's very similar to an operating system package manager. If I say yum install Ansible, I just expect Ansible to be installed on my computer. Um, Helm kind of works in that same way with Kubernetes. And so quick little glance at Helm. Um, I left a couple links there uh, about the project. Um, it just received or um, it just reached graduated status uh, with the CNCF last year, uh, which is very exciting. Um, and they have a highly active development community and there's some stats there that you can see. Um, so Helm, Helm 101 here, Helm creates a wrapper called charts around OCP resources. And so what you can see here is, is a Helm chart um, uh, wrapping around a deployment, a service, a config map, and a route. So four common resources that you might need to deploy as OpenShift application. And then a user, instead of having to go in and create each of these resources by hand, they can just run one command, Helm install, and it's actually going to go and create each of these resources for them. Um, a Helm chart is written by a subject matter expert, uh, you know, by a member of your operations team or your DevOps team. And so this is what they would see. Um, and the benefit that they have is that YAML definitions are dynamically generated. So you can see there in red, those are placeholders for uh, parameters. So, um, you know, the number of replicas that you want in, in, in your deployment, um, the user can specify that. Um, you know, the user can specify the image that they want in their container, the uh, resources there. So an operator, um, you know, the human operator would, would write this YAML um, and then the user would receive the benefit by not having to write all of the YAML there in black, um, just the red there would be replaced by, by their input. Um, so kind of expanding on that, users configure their installation using values. So uh, there's kind of an example values file there. So you can see, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, the number of replicas, the image, uh, resources, so on. And uh, to install that, they run one simple command, Helm install, and they give it a name. So my app, uh, point it to the Helm chart that they're using. Um, so our Spring Boot Helm chart, and then uh, dash dash values, should be two dashes there, uh, values.yaml to, to refer to those parameters. And then there you go, it gives you those resources there. Um, without you having to actually have written the hundreds of lines of YAML to, that you would normally require to, to uh, configure those. So uh, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Sachin. He's going to get uh, more in detail with DFS Helm Chart Repository. Um, I'll stop sharing Sachin, and then you can take it away. Uh, thanks, Austin, uh, for explaining about the Helm uh, and the Kubernetes Package Manager. So at the DFS, Discover Financial Services, uh, we have a Helm uh, chart repository where we are maintaining the Helm charts. Now, this Helm chart has been maintained by the OpenShift platform team. Uh, the source code for the charts are located in the GitHub. Uh, we try to uh, package this chart and archive into the artifactory. We try to maintain the good versioning of the all the changes with respect to the change logs and then uh, app dev team can pin to specific version of the chart so that it's not a breaking changes for that application. Uh, the Helm charts provide the common set of components for all the application teams, and it's opened towards the you know uh, uh, solution to prescribe by the enterprise platform team. So uh, we have like a we have built we started with the building the image build chart for kind of building the. Uh, application image, which translate into the OpenShift build config. Then we have a specific set of deployment chart for each set of technology, uh, like a uh, Node.js chart for the Node.js applications, uh, Spring Boot chart for the Spring Boot application, and then uh, there's a generic deployment chart. So this chart is kind of unoriented towards the any language or framework. And then there are a set of common um, Templates or boilerplate codes, we are trying to abstract that in the library chart. So, the way we have structured this is um, if application uh, developer needs to uh, work with the Helm CLI, um, they need to install this uh, repository, Helm repository, uh, using the Helm repo add command. Once they add the uh, Helm chart repository into their local uh, workstation, uh, they can work with the specific Helm chart. 
uh, and then they can issue the Helm installer update releases uh, based on the specific uh, Helm chart. Like in this example, is a Spring Boot Helm chart, and then they can provide the set of values. Now, there's also a way in terms of the OpenShift UI, which we are going to explore it in the future. But this uh, UI provides a nice way to configure the uh, Helm chart and then application team can utilize those Helm chart via the UI, OpenShift UI. So while running the application on the OpenShift, the, there are two high level steps. Uh, one is a build and deploy. So we are targeting uh, in terms of the specific Helm chart uh, for this uh, build and deploy process. So building the application uh, is like building the application image and pushing it to the uh, OpenShift registry. And for deployment, it's going to pull from the OpenShift registry and going to deploy on the OpenShift and create the uh, set of resources on the OpenShift platform. The way it works like uh, 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 AppDev will be reviewing the image build chart. In our case, it's image build, which is building the image. So it's going to read the documentation and then we are providing the samples for the uh, app dev team, so they will be referring to those samples, uh, trying to clone those values um, into their uh, local repository, and then they're going to issue the Helm install command, and that's how it's going to start building the application image. Now there are a set of flags uh, which they can enable so that the build starts automatically, or they can manually trigger the build. So once the build is done, next step will be a build is uh, uh, creating the artifactory image. It will be stored. And then now the next step is for deployment. Now, based on the technology, uh, the application is built on. They can use either Spring Boot, Node.js, or generic deployment Helm charts. So they'll review the chart documentation. Uh, we are providing the examples of the demos uh, application so that they can refer those values files and then they can issue the Helm install command with the specific uh, technology related Helm chart, like in this example, Spring Boot, and deploy those uh, application image to the OpenShift platform. So it also works with the grid with the CI/CD pipeline. What uh, I explained in the previous two uh, steps is more of the manual way of using the Helm CLI in terms of the, for the local workstation. But if they have a Jenkins uh, kind of a pipeline, then uh, they can uh, plug in these two stages. Like the one is the build stage where they're going to use the image build chart to build the application image. And then it followed by the deploy stage where they're going to deploy the application to the OpenShift platform. Now, creating an enterprise Helm chart repository, um, the specific set of requirements. So. Uh, the code base. So we are maintaining the Helm chart code base in the GitHub and uh, it follows a specific structure. So in our case, this, there are a series of Helm charts. So we are maintaining those in the GitHub repo along with the readme and its pipeline. And then in terms of the storing the Helm chart, uh, uh, we are using the uh, image registry. In this case, if uh, one can use the artifactory in access uh, in terms of the image registry for the along with the Helm chart repository. So there are high level uh, design consideration while building the Helm chart. Uh, consider the user experience. Design the charts to require a few values input uh, as possible from the user. So you can abstract some of the values from the user so that user can provide the minimal input uh, in terms of values. Uh, you can abstract the service integration as well, like uh, uh, if they are trying to connect to the external service uh, via proxy or database, you can abstract that in terms of the Helm values. Uh, and try to design the chart as flexible as possible so that user can provide its custom input as well in terms of the init container, sidecar container. And you have to make sure that you are versioning the charts properly so there are no breaking changes if application is using specific version of the chart and you are upgrading it, you just make sure that the versions are maintained so that it uh, doesn't break the application. Uh, document each chart's intent use. So it's a clear in terms of usage. If it is a generic chart, make sure that you define the requirement for that. 
uh, simplify the internal reference such as uh, container register URLs, enterprise container image values, whether it's possible, and provide the uh, examples, the demos of the project uh, so that uh, community can learn faster and they, they can utilize those Elm charts. Uh, we can make the Helm chart uh, uh, development easier with the uh, library chart. Like we can abstract the uh, common code into library chart so that it can be used by the uh, other uh, charts. So in this example, we are trying to you know uh, define the library chart, which is going to uh, capture the boiler code reusable code, and then uh, we can uh, use that library chart as an include in terms of the specific chart. So, for example, if you're building a generic deployment chart, you can include that library chart. And also, if you are so building the Spring Boot or Node.js, you can include this library chart reference into that. And uh, for the, uh, uh, since we are building the Helm chart, we run through the uh, CI CD process for the Helm chart all as well. Like there's a CI pipeline, which is uh, testing, uh, packaging, and releasing the Helm chart. Uh, based on specific version of changes. So we are using the CT tool, which is going to uh, chart testing tool, which is the series of steps going to follow CT in it is going to list all the update chart. Uh, then CT install is going to install the chart, help packages to package the chart, and then we can uh, push it to the uh, artifactory or repository uh, using the call command. Thank you and let us know if any questions.